Hi, Caleb. Hello. Hi, Ben.
it says it started, so I don't know. I'm getting ready to start class. So what were you trying to watch? When your free trial ends, your subscription will automatically begin. They'll charge you nine ninety nine per month. So. Yeah. Love your. Right. Anyway, what were you trying to watch? All right, I got to teach class. All right. I'm spending money I don't have. <sighs> Kids are great. All right, you guys. Looks like it's a small group today, but I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm sure other people will pop in. Uh, we were, we had done this problem number 14 in my math lab on the graphing, and then we're here for solving logarithmic equations. All right, so. Uh, here's two examples. In order to solve a logarithmic equation, um, this type, you have to convert it from log form to exponential form. So I don't remember what colors I was using the other day. I want to say pink in this color. You start with the base. It's a base of three. All right, so I'm going to take base three. And then you're going to raise it to, remember logarithms are always equal to the exponent. So you're going to raise that to the exponent. So I'll have the three here, the exponent of two there, and then it's going to equal whatever it was you were taking the logarithm of, which was the four X minus seven. And then of course, um, this over here, three squared, that would be nine. And then I'd add over the seven, nine and seven, 16. And I would divide off the four, 16 divided by four is four. And then be my answer. So same thing on the other one, you're gonna start with the base. It's log base X. So you're going to put your X right there and then you're going to raise it to the power of two. That's going to be your exponent. So it'll be X squared is equal to whatever it was you were taking the log of. And that is um, 64. Now this is a quadratic equation. And so I'm just going to take the x squared equals 64 and I'm going to square root it. And so x is just going to equal 8. Um, when you're in log land, you cannot have negative bases. So you'll only want the positive value. And then the next slide in the PowerPoint just shows their steps, which look pretty much just like mine, except they put the 4x minus 7. <laughs> they put the 4x minus 7 on the left and the 3 squared on the right, but you know, it really doesn't matter what side they go on. And then down here, you can see they put plus or minus 8, but it says, because the base of a logarithm must be positive, you discard the negative 8. All right. All right, what's next? Um, Okay, uh, same thing, except this one has a base E. So because, um, oh, sorry, uh, this is not the same thing. This one is an exponential equation. And when we were doing the exponential equations before, we used the thing that said if x to the a equaled x to the B, then, then the A equaled the B. But on this particular problem, my two bases, the base on this side is an E and the base on this side is a five. 
the bases are not the same. and cannot be made the same. So you have to use logarithms. Like before we had, you know, like three to the X equaled uh, 27, you know, and we'd change the 27 to a three cubed and then we'd have a three to the this equals a three to the that. So we'd make the this equal to that and we'd solve it. If you cannot make that happen, then you have to use logarithms. So we're gonna leave exponent land and travel to log land. And in log land, <laughs> this is your base, but it's a natural log because it's base E. So it's the natural log, which is really an invisible base E right there, of the five. And remember, logarithms always equal the exponent. Your exponent right here is what's going to go right here. So the 2x goes right there. So really what I have here is the natural log of five equals two X. And then to solve it for X, I would divide by two and the twos cancel on the left. So I'm end up with the natural log of five all over a two is equal to an X. Now this is an exact answer. If my math lab wants you to grab your calculator It'll say, give your answer to the nearest whatever. And then you'd give a decimal answer, which means you'd calculate, you know, with your calculator, natural log of five, and then divide it by two. Um, if it just says, give a simplified answer, that's simplified. It's ugly, but that's your answer. Natural log of five all over two. And make sure this is very clearly, the two and the natural log of five are separated. Don't make it look like the natural log of five halves because that's not the right thing. And then of course here is their answer. And you can see they said exact solution right here. And this one would be considered an approximate solution to the nearest. On this one, they went to the nearest thousandth because they went out three places. So just do whatever my math lab tells you to do. So I'm going to go through a few of my math lab examples now on solving these types of equations. Um, if it is a logarithmic equation, you have to change it to exponential. So I always start with the base because I know that the base in the log is also the base in the exponent form. <clears throat> and then the um, exponent right here is always going to be whatever it, your logarithm is set equal to. So this is going to be 9 raised to the second, and then that's going to equal whatever you were taking the logarithm of, which is the x. I think I used yellow for that the other day, as I recall. This guy right here is going to go there. And this one's actually already solved for x. x is equal to, and I just have to calculate 9 squared, which the last time I checked was in 81. So you don't have to type x equals 81 because they just want the solution set. So just type 81 in there. And that's it. That's about as easy as it gets. All right, another one. It's in log form, so leaving log land, going to exponent land, start with the base. The base is a two. So two goes right here. You're gonna raise that to a power, and that power is going to be this guy over here. Whatever your log is set equal to, that will always be your exponent. Most of the time it is a number, I don't know, you might, it could be like an X plus seven over there, who knows. 
and then just set it equal to the only thing that's left in this problem, which is all of this, the 5x plus 6. That's going to go right there. And now you can solve it for x using your awesome equation solving skills. So I'm going to start with the 2 to the 4th. That would be what, 16? And then I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides so that that cancels and I get 10 is equal to 5x. And then of course, if 10 is equal to 5x, divide off the 5 so that that cancels and you get 2. X should equal a 2. Okay. And then 33. Okay, same thing. <laughs> Leaving Logland, pack your bags, we're taking a trip. We're gonna start with the base. The base is an X. We're gonna raise that to the power of two. And then that is gonna equal whatever it is you were taking the logarithm of. That's gonna go here. So it's X raised to the second equals the 36. You're just converting it from its log form to its exponential form. And then of course, what this really is, is a quadratic equation. So you can either set it equal to zero and solve for X or just use the square root method, square root both sides. And so technically you get a positive or a negative six, but logarithms can't be negative. So X equal to six is your only number. So boop, goes in there. You can't have negative bases in Logland. It's like a major faux pas. It's like wearing white after Labor Day. You just don't do it. All right. Uh, this one involves the natural logarithm, or as I like to call them, logarithms el naturel. And you have to remember that when you have the natural log of e to the x equal to 16, you really have an invisible e right here. That is your base. So you've got this e is your base. Whatever the logarithm is set equal to, which is this 16, that's your exponent. And in exponent land, you're going to set it equal to this guy. This is what's going to go over here. So it's the e raised to the 16 is going to equal the e to the x. And on this one, my bases are the same. I have an e to the this equals an e to the that. So my this equals my that, and I'm done. And just drop those E's, drop your bases. Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? I can go faster. I was born in New York. I can go really fast. All right. Log base four of 16 equals two X plus two. Um, I'm just gonna solve it the exact same way I've been doing all of them so far. I am going to start with the base, log base four. So the four is my base in exponent land. My exponent, now on this one, this whole thing is what it's set equal to. So that whole thing has to go in my exponent spot. So this is going to be base 4 raised to the 2x plus 2, and then that's going to equal the 16. Whatever it was that you were taking the 
log of, that's what it, you're going to set it equal to in exponent land. Now, in order to solve this, I have to go back to the previous section or two ago where we solved exponential equations. Um, I can make the bases the same because 16 is actually 4 squared. So 4 raised to the 2x plus 2 is going to equal, and I'm going to change my 16 to a 4 squared. And now I can just drop the bases of 4 and just take the 2x plus 2 and set it equal to the other exponent of 2. And then, of course, you know, go to town, start solving. I would subtract the 2 to cancel it out here. And when I subtract it on the other side, I get 0. So I got 2x is equal to 0. And then I'll take my 2x and divide off that 2 so that it cancels here. But I have to do the same thing on the other side. And 0 divided by anything is still 0. You can divide into 0. You just can't divide by 0. So my answer is x is equal to 0, or as I like to call it, that's my hugs and kisses answer. You know, x's and o's, hugs and kisses. You ever had grandma do that on your card? Put X's and O's, you know. Never mind. Okay. Man, I miss teaching in the classroom <laughs> where I can hear the groans and the moans of my students when I make really bad jokes. Okay. <laughs> e to the 3x equals 2. Okay. So this one is, is an exponential equation. But I cannot make the bases the same like I did on that last one. I made both of my bases into fours. On this one, I have a base of an E, which is really 2.718, whatever that obnoxious number is. And the other one is a two. You cannot force them to be the same base. So you're going to change it from exponent form to logarithmic form. I'll still start with my base. My base is an E, so that means I'm going to be doing natural logarithm, which means there's the E right there. It's really invisible, but I'll write it so you know he's, I didn't really lose him. And it's going to be the natural log of whatever it is, your answer up here, this will be a 2. And remember, logarithms are always set equal to whatever the exponent was in exponent land, that goes right here. So I'm just kind of going backwards. Boop. And my math lab says, type an exact answer in simplified form, use integers or fractions for any numbers in the expression, use a common and separate integers. It does not want me to grab my calculator, so. Remember the natural log of 2, that E is really invisible. So it's natural log of 2 is equal to the 3x. And then to solve for x, I'll divide off the 3 to get x by itself. But then you have to divide this entire side by 3. So my answer is the natural log of 2 all over a 3 is equal to the x. But in here, you're just going to type natural log of 2 all over 3. So just make sure the numerator is just the natural log of 2 and the denominator is just the 3. Okay, be careful that you don't write the natural log of 2 thirds like that. That would be wrong. My math lab will let you know real quick. Do the big old error message. And the last one, solve this equation. This one is in logarithmic form, so I have to change it to exponential. I will start with the base. So it's going to be a base 5 raised to the power of whatever it is that I have the log set equal to. That goes right there. And then that's going to equal the x squared plus 3, all of that.
all of this is going to go right here. <clears throat> Now this is a quadratic equation because I got an x squared, but over here, five cubed, I can actually work that out. Five times five times five is 125. And then I start solving. I'm gonna subtract the three on both sides. That gives me what? 122 is equal to x squared. And then in order to solve for X, I'm gonna have to take my X squared and square root him. And what you do to one side, you gotta do to the other. So X, now in this one, X, my X is right here. It's not my base. So on this particular problem, you can have both the positive and the negative of 122. Because when you stick it where X is right here, first thing you're gonna do is square it. And if you square a negative, it'll make it positive. You won't be taking logs of negative numbers and you won't have a base that is a negative. So on this one, uh, 122, I can divide that by two, but that's not a perfect square. That's 61, yep. I cannot simplify that radical. 122 does not have any factors that are perfect squares, so he's ugly. So in my math lab right here, I'm gonna go negative square root of 122, comma, positive square root of 122. That is a really bad square root sign. Negative square root, there we go. <clears throat> you can have the negative one, that one, because X is not the logs base and after you plug it in first thing you do is square it which will make it positive and then positive plus three makes it even more positive so there's no danger of taking a log of a negative number so it should check and that finishes up 6.4 y'all good Okay, so we are moving on to six, five. All right, and in six, five, there are four objectives. We are going to look at some properties of logarithms. We're going to learn how to write logarithms as a sum or a difference. Then we'll go in reverse and learn how to take them as sums or differences and compress them back down to single logarithms. And then we're going to evaluate logarithms um, using something called the base change formula. So this shouldn't take me too long. All right, properties. Here they are. Um, at the top, if you have log base A of 1, it always equals 0. This guy right here log base anything of a one will always equal zero because a raised to the zero always equals one. If I were to change it from um, log form to exponential form, here's my base, right? And here's my exponent. And here's the thing. Come on. Here's the thing I was taking the logarithm of, just color coding. So that's that. And this is another one you can remember. If you have the log base A of an A and it's set equal, it'll always equal one. That's because if I take the base A, raise it to the first power, it should equal the A. Here's the base. Here's the exponent. 
And there's the other A, what you were taking the logarithm of right here. I didn't color code these, I forgot, sorry. Right there, and there, and there, and that and that. So just like you've always remembered that anything to the zero power equals one, you now need to remember that log base anything of one will always equal zero. And just like you've always remembered that anything raised to the first power just equals itself, now you can remember that log base A of an A always equals a one. Just more math crap you have to memorize. Now, there's two extensions of this. Um, in the properties given next, capital M and lowercase a are positive real numbers and a does not equal a one. We took care of the ones up here, all right? This is the stuff that involves the one. Down here, we're looking at anything else and r is any real number. So the log base a of capital M is the exponent to which a must be raised to obtain m, which means they actually call these inverse rules. Um, the way I like to explain it is um, if you have base a, okay, and it is raised to an exponent, but within that exponent, you've got base A, and then you've got log base A of an M. You notice how, I'm trying to color code, this A right here on that logarithm matches this A they it's it's as if they cancel each other out and you're just left with the m which is what they're saying right there so if i had like three raised to the log base three of a seven my answer would just be seven it's like the three and the log base three cancel each other out and then the other one down here says if you have log base a of an a raised to the r, that will end up just equaling the r. Um, because <laughs> you've got base a right here. If I were converting this from log form to exponential, there's my a. And then remember, it's always set equal to whatever it's set equal to, that's your exponent right here. So that'd be my R. And then that's gonna equal whatever it was that you were taking the logarithm of, which was this stuff here. And you can see that A to the R equals A to the R. If if you have an A to the this and it equals an A to the that, this equals that, R equals R. So once again, it's just like this log base A cancels out that A and you're just left with the exponent of R. I call them inverse rules. So if I had log base four of a four raised to the seventh power, that would just equal the seven. It'll work every time without you having to convert it to exponential form. So it just happens. So here's their three examples and they just flat out put the uh, answers right next to them. They've got two raised to the log base two of pi. They've got two raised to the log base two of pi. This base, oh, I should have used pink, sorry. Boop. Used to do my bases in pink. This base here matches the base on that log. 
So it's like they cancel each other out and all you're left with is the pi. That's your answer. This equals pi. And then on the next one, they've got log base. They've got log base 0 0.2 of a 0 0.2 raised to the negative square root of 2. If the base on the logarithm equals the base right here, then the answer is just going to be the exponent because this cancels out. And so you're just left with negative square root of two. And then on the last one, they're being sneaky. It's a natural log of E raised to the KT. And then you have to remember that there is an invisible E right here. So the base on the logarithm also equals the base right here. And so that means that the exponent is your answer because natural log of E and base E cancel each other out. So you're just left with the KT and that's my answer. So when you get to my math lab, um, I think there's only the first four questions. So I just did number one and two. There are drop down boxes. Um, it says complete the sentence below. If A raised to the log base A of M, what's that gonna simplify to be? Well, just keep in mind that this A here and that A there are the same. Whoops. So those cancel each other out and you're just left with M. So M is what I'd pick. And same thing on the other one. I've got log base A of A raised to the second or second R power. So this log base A and that A cancel out. So I'm left with the R. R is my answer. That's how fast you'll do these. <clears throat> All right, so, so much for those logarithm properties. We got some more. Uh, there's more properties that we will use to write logarithmic expressions as sums or differences of logarithms. And there are one, two, three, there's four of them here, so. One and two were on previous slides. Now we got three, four, five, and six. Okay. The log of a product actually equals the sum of the logs. And this log rule is very similar to that exponent rule from a way, or way back. Do you remember the exponent rule that says if you have x to the a times x to the b, you're supposed to keep one x and then raise it to the a plus b. When the bases were the same, you added your exponents. And the bases are being multiplied right here. Well, when I look at this log base A of an M times N, there's really a multiplication right here between the M and the N. That multiplication, you're gonna split it up into two separate logarithms and add them together, just like you would with the exponents. Because logarithms really are exponents. Remember, when you're converting from log form to exponential, whatever the log is set equal to, that is your exponent in exponential form. So you split it up and it's not really the distributive property, but it kind of looks like it. You give log base A to each piece and then separate, separate the M and the N with an addition sign. The next one says log base A of M divided by N. And this one is similar to the exponent rule that says, if you have X to the A 
and you're dividing it by x to the b, that's actually x to the a minus b. Remember that rule? We are dividing right here. This is what we're showing here, dividing. And because it's you're supposed to subtract, that's this subtraction right here. And it, again, it's like you're giving the log base A to the numerator and the log base A to the denominator, but you split them up as a subtraction problem. And then we've got, I guess we'll use green on this one. The next one is called the power rule. Uh, the log of a power equals the product of the power and the log. This one is similar to the exponent rule that says if you have x to the a and you raise that to another power b, then that is equal to a x to the a times b. It's the power to the power rule. Well, remember the logarithm is the exponent. So you've got log base A of M raised to the R. So they take this R right here and they put it out in front and then multiply it. And that's what they're showing here. It becomes R times log base A of M. The multiplication happens right here, just like it does over here. R is an exponent and log base A of M is an exponent. And when you have a power to a power, you multiply. Um, number six. I don't think we're ever going to use number six. So I don't think any of the my math lab examples that you guys have. So for right now, we're just going to not talk about that one. I don't think we need it. No, at least I didn't use it when I was doing my examples. All right, so here's their examples. It says, write a logarithmic expression as a sum of the logarithms. So when I look at this, I see log base A of an X times the square root of an X squared plus one. So you can see that there is a multiplication happening right there those two. So this is like your M times this is like your N. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you what they did. Um, they split it up. They've got the X here and the square root of X squared plus one there. So it becomes a log base A of the X plus, here's the plus, and then the log base A of the X squared plus one. However, that's using this rule right here. Okay, and I just use that rule. But then it's gonna tell you in my math lab to write any exponents as um, products. Any powers on your logarithms should be written as products. So they changed that square root. Um, let's see, use the highlighter on that. They changed this square root to raising it to a power of one half right there. And then they use that last rule that says, okay, take the one half and fly it out in front right here and multiply it times the log base A of X squared plus one. They just took this guy and said, whoa, bring him over here. And there he is. And that's using that rule. And that's your answer. You just wrote it out as multiple logarithms. And then they want you to write this one as a difference of logarithms and keep in mind that it is a division right here. So the X squared is like the M and the X minus one cubed is like the N. So this would be the natural log of the M minus the natural log of the X minus one cubed. 
but then I'm not supposed to have any exponents here. I have to use the rule that says make it a product so it's going to fly out in front. So this ultimately is natural log of m minus three times the natural log of an x minus one, which is what they have. Oh, shoot. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> Sorry. My M is an X squared. Hello. <laughs> I forgot to do that. I hate it when I do dumb shit like that. All right. And then the two has to go out in front of here. So there we go. Two natural log of X minus three natural log of X minus one. <sighs> okay. There it is. Ta-da. Now I got it right. And I got another exponent problem, or another, not exponent, another uh, write a logarithmic expression as a sum in difference of logarithms. All right, this one's a two for one special. You have this division right here, but you also have this multiplication there. So not only are you dividing, but you're gonna have to use the subtraction rule, but you're gonna have to use that addition rule. Um, I'm just gonna go and look what they did. How many extra steps did they do? All right, so they started with, they're like, okay, here's the division. Um, this is your numerator. So that's like your M. So here is the log base A of this guy over, this is your entire denominator. So it goes, here's the subtraction sign. So it's log base A of the numerator junk minus log base A of the denominator junk. But you'll notice they put that inside of brackets because it's behind a subtraction sign. So property number four was splitting up into two separate logarithms with a subtraction sign in between them to take care of this division line right here. Then they used property number three, property number three, because you've got multiplication right here they split these up with an addition sign. So now it's <clears throat> log base A of the X cubed plus a log base A of the X plus one raised to the fourth. And then next, looks like they combined a couple of steps here. Uh, they changed this square root to a set of parentheses raised to a one half power. And in the same breath, it looks like they, they did, they distributed it, did the minus sign to both of these. So now you got a minus log base A of X cubed and a minus log base A of X plus one to the fourth. So that was just, you know, old school stuff. Change the radical to a power and then distribute the minus sign to get rid of the brackets. And then the last thing that they're gonna do is use property number five, which says take all of your exponents. Um, what's a good color? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's use orange. Property number five says take your exponents, which would be this one half, this three and this four and fly them out in front of their own logarithm. So here's the one half, here's the three and here's the four. And then that's your final answer. One half log base A of an X squared plus one minus three times log base A of X minus four times log base A of an X plus one. Okay, and I've got 
quite a few um, my math lab examples on this one. Um, my math lab number four, I took a screenshot of my printed out version because it wouldn't, when I was in my math lab, it wouldn't let me, um, <laughs> would let me hit both drop down boxes at the same time so you can see what they both had. But these are drop down boxes. So for this one here, which is number one, these are your choices. And for number two here, these will be your drop down box choices. All right. And this is uh, that subtraction property because, because this is division here, that's going to give you this subtraction right there. So your numerator is going to be log base. It's going to be log base A of the M. So it's going to be log base A of the M. That's going to be this one here. And then your behind the subtraction sign, your second drop down box is going to be log base A of the denominator. Log base A of N would be this one. So this is log base A of the M, and this is log base A of the N. Number six says use the properties of logarithms. That is log base seven of seven to the 60th power. That is just going to equal the 60 because this log base seven and that base seven will cancel each other out based on that property number two, or one or two, whichever one it was back. Um, and then this is another property where it, you've got base four raised to the log base four of the two. So the answer is just the two, that's your answer. That's my answer. Short, sweet, and to the point. But now number nine says, use the properties of logarithms to find the exact value of the expression. Do not use a calculator. You can't use a calculator anyway because your calculator, that log button, only does log base 10. These are log base 14s. So, I am going to use the fact that they are being added. I've got log base 14 of 2 plus log base 14 of 7. So this is going to equal a log base 14 of the 2 times the 7. I'm going to go in reverse. I'm going to condense them down to a single logarithm. Go backwards. And then what I really have is log base 14 of a 14. And if you remember, log base 14 of a 14 should always equal a 1. And that's my answer there. That was one of the other first or second properties we went over. Yeah, it was log base A of one equals zero and log base A of A equals one. And number 10, Write the expression as a sum and or difference of logarithms. And then it says express powers as factors. Express powers as factors because they're multiplied. Okay, well, they want it as a sum or a difference. I'm going to start with the fact that the 81, let me rewrite this. I've got log base three of an 81X. 
Remember, 81x means 81 times x. So you're going to split this up. It's going to be log base 3 of the 81 plus log base 3 of the x. Type an exact answer in simplified form. So I can actually, when they say put it in simplified form, in simplified form, this guy here I can simplify because 81, this is gonna be log base three, and I'm gonna take the 81 out and make it a three to the fourth power. So that I can use whatever exponent rule it was, or not exponent rule, logarithm and rule. If you have log base three of a three raised to the fourth power, those just cancel out and you're just left with the four. So my answer will be four plus log base three of the X. Number 11. The only thing I can do on this one is express powers as factors. Because what I have is, <clears throat> I have log base three of a Z raised to an eighth power of eight. Um, the three and the Z are not the same base, so they don't cancel out. And Z is not multiplied onto anything or divided by anything, but it is raised to a power. So I'm going to take this eight and simply throw it out in front here. So this is actually going to equal eight times log base three of the Z. That's it. All right, moving on, 13. Again, write it as a sum and or difference of logarithms express powers as factors. The express powers as factors, that's always the last thing you do. Um, when I look at this, I see that I've got the natural log of a fraction. So the numerator is being divided by the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of the entire numerator needs to go in parentheses and then minus the natural log of the denominator, which is e to the 3x. And if you now remember, I'm going to rewrite it so you can see here what I got going on. This is each actually natural log base e of e to the 3x. That's an invisible e, which means this and this cancel each other out. So my answer is natural log of x minus 2 minus a 3x. And I, I didn't even need to use that, that part really at all because natural E canceled out. Are we having fun yet with the logarithms? Another one. Expression as a sum and or difference of logarithms express powers as factors. Um, I am going to be using this one. When I first start this, I have log base A of a U to the seventh times a V to the ninth. 
There's multiplication going on here. So this is going to equal log base A of the U to the seventh plus log base A of the V to the ninth. And now express powers, and I have two of them, the seven and the nine, they're going to fly out in front. So this is going to equal seven times the log base A of the U plus nine times the log base E of the V. It ain't pretty, but that's my answer. Just make sure the logarithms don't get you. You know, like the rhythm gets you. The rhythm's going to get you. You guys are probably too young to remember uh, Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine, but you know, rhythm is going to get you. Rhythm is going to get you. Don't let the logarithms get you. Yeah, that was worthy of an eye roll. All right, 16. Write the expression as a sum and blah, 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 blah. Same damn shit. Okay. This one, need my red pen. This one, you've got division here. So this is going to equal the log base 2 of the numerator, which is x to the 15th, and then minus the log base two. Now, since your denominator is a binomial, it must go inside of parentheses. And now I can utilize the um, express powers as factors because I do have one power right here. So the 15 is going to go in front. So it's going to be 15 times, and you don't have to put the dot there, but the 15 right next to the LOG does mean to multiply. So this will be log base 2 of x, because <clears throat> the 15 got moved, minus, and then this is still log base 2 of an x minus 5. All right, so that's a bunch of example of um, taking a, an expression that has a single logarithm in it and expanding it out to multiple logarithms. Now, their directions say write it as a sum and or difference of logarithms, but you could have two logarithms, you could have three logarithms, you know, it's multiple. You're now going to put your brain in reverse and they're now going to give you this and they're going to want you to write it like that. They're going to say, take this mess and condense it down to a single logarithm. That's what's coming next. Write a logarithmic expression as a single logarithm. So they've got three examples here. Um, you know how I said you use that power rule last when you're expanding them out? Well, we're going in reverse. So guess what? You're going to use that first. So if you see any numbers in front of the logs, like right here, first thing you're going to do is throw his ass back up into the exponent position. Same thing here, this two thirds, he's going to go up here and none on those. So let's look at their examples, how they wrote them out. Uh, you can see right here, they started with the four and they moved it right there. There it is. It's still log base A of seven plus, they moved the four and made it log base A of three to the fourth. And then three to the fourth is actually 81. So, they change this three to the fourth to 81. And then they condensed it down because 
you've now got log base A of a seven plus, no, I didn't use, I used blue for that color, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Plus log base A of an 81. So if you condense it down to a single logarithm, you ultimately multiply the seven and the 81, which is the big ass number of 567. And that is your single logarithm, log base A of a 567. And then on part B, here's the original problem. And you can see they started with the two thirds and moved that up to the eight. That's right here. Natural log of eight to the two thirds. And then they simplified. They took this eight to the two thirds. If you take eight and raise it to the two thirds power, I don't know if you remember how to do this, but eight to the two thirds is really the cubed root of eight that then gets squared. And the cubed root of eight is two and two squared is four. And you can see that they have the four right here. And then uh, they also took this five squared and made it 25. And then they took 25 minus one and got this 24. And now to condense it down, You've got the natural log of four minus the natural log of 24. So instead of the subtraction of two logs, it's a single log where the first term is divided by the second. The four, which is in front of the subtraction sign is your numerator. And the 24, which is behind your subtraction sign is your denominator. And then they reduced that because four over 24 is one sixth. Oh, and then they're like, hey, we got a one involved in there. <laughs> so they, they went back, they said, hey, let's take the split and put it back to multiple logarithms because the natural log of the natural log of one is a zero. And zero minus the natural log of six is the natural log of six or negative natural log of six. Well, that was kind of sneaky. You know, whenever you got a natural a log or a natural log of a one, that's ultimately zero. And then C, I did not have to move any exponents, but you've got things that are being added together. Um, this is being added. The first and the second log are being added, and so is the third. So you're going to take the X, the nine and the x squared plus one and they're actually going to get all multiplied together you can see they started one by one they took the nine times the x and then here's the x squared plus one still added in between and now it's all together nine x nine times x times x squared plus one but then at the end you have a minus log of log base a of five. So for this minus, which is this minus, it kept carrying it around. Finally, they ended up dividing by the five. So as a single logarithm, it's log base a of nine times x times x squared plus one all over a five. And there's no need to distribute the nine x. Just leave it in factored form. So what are you going to face in my math lab? Here you go. Number 17. Um, I'm going to start with the fact that we have a seven multiplied in front. He's going to move up to his exponent position. So is this eight. So my first step is going to be, this is log base two of u to the seventh plus log base two of V to the eighth. And then because they're being added together, 
I can now condense it down to a single logarithm that is a u to the seventh times a v to the eighth. And technically there's multiplication right here. Just so you remember, because of this addition, you end up multiplying these two together. If you want, you can put parentheses around them, but my math lab will take it as log base two, u to the seventh, v to the eighth. I already tested it out. Um, you can use parentheses or not. It didn't, it didn't care. Whenever I used to write these out myself, um, I always use parentheses just to make sure I knew it was the log of all that mess and I didn't accidentally, you know, lose somebody along the way. But that's an Aprilism. That's something I did. You don't have to. Um, number 18, write the expression as a single logarithm expressed powers as factors. Okay, again, we're condensing it down to a single logarithm. Uh, why would you express powers as factors? I think you meant to say express factors as powers. <laughs> oh, in the end, okay, all right. Um, let's see, first things first. I've got the log base three of this stuff minus the log base three of that stuff. So because they are subtracting, it's gonna be the log base three of the first stuff divided by the second stuff. If you wanna put in parentheses, you can. The first stuff was the square root of X. The second stuff was X to the seventh. Now, both of those have the same base, they're x's. So I'm going to change that square root of x to x to the one half. And then because I'm dividing with x's, I have to go back to my exponent rule that says this is going to be log base three of x to the one half minus seven, You're supposed to subtract your exponents. And if I'm not using a calculator here, I would change my seven to 14 halves. Seven holes is 14 halves so that I can subtract it from the one half. And so now I've got log base three of X to the negative 13 halves. And this is where this part comes in. My final answer is going to be negative 13 halves times log base three of an X. Got to fly that negative 13 halves out in front and it gets multiplied onto that log base three of X. I may have done too many examples. Um, another one, single logarithm. I'm subtracting. So this is going to be log base four of the X squared minus 49 all over, oh, eh, crap. Uh, I'm gonna do two steps in one here. This six right here is supposed to go up here. So my denominator is gonna be an X plus seven raised to the sixth. Now keep in mind, this is the log base four of all of this stuff. Now my math lab says, simplify your answer please. So all the stuff in the parentheses, I have to go back to like, you know, my algebra skills. And the numerator can be factored because that's a difference of two squares. That's an X plus seven times an X minus seven.
And at this point, I can simplify this x plus 7 will cancel out one of the 6, leaving you with 5. So my final answer is log base 4 of an x minus 7 over an x plus 7 to the fifth power. And just so you know, um, this set of parentheses here, they're really not needed in my math lab. I just prefer, I prefer to put them there. But you just have to make sure it's log base 4 and then get your, your cursor out of the, the, um, the subscript position and then hit a fraction bar, fraction button, so you can get a fraction in there. Let me go show you that real quick. Woo, where's my math lab? This is the wrong assignment. 6.5. I already did number 17. Uh, oh, number 19 is what I wanted. Number 19. And it's similar exercise. So this would be, um, you'd hit LOG and then hit the subscript button, which is here, and then hit four and then scroll over and then hit your fraction button and then type in the numerator and the denominator. All right, that's what I was talking about. Do it like that. Okay. Um, oh, this one's fun. You start off by adding right here so that means you're going to multiply these two things. But then you've got um, division, or sorry, subtraction, which means you're going to divide. So as a single logarithm, it's going to be the natural log of my, it's going to be a fraction here. Behind the subtraction sign is the x squared minus 1. In front of the subtraction sign, you're actually going to take the x over the x minus 1 times the x plus 1 over x. I did two steps together there. These things here have to get multiplied, and this thing here is in the denominator. It's divided. That's this down here. Now it does say to simplify. So um, my new my my denominator x squared minus one that can be factored to be an x plus one x minus one. In my numerator, you can cross cancel this x and that x. And then you're left with an x plus 1 over an x minus 1. Now here comes the fun part. Yes, I'm in log land, but it's the natural log of all of this, which is the polynomial in fraction land. So I have to rewrite this as, all right, I don't need the natural log right now. If you take the x plus 1 over the x minus 1 and you see the division bar as a division sign, you're dividing by x plus 1 times x minus 1. Yeah, well in fraction land when you divide fractions, you have to change the problem from division to multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to be 1 over an x plus 1, x minus 1. And now you can cross cancel this x plus 1 and that x plus 1. So what I end up with here is the natural log of 
one over, and in the bottom I've got this x minus one right here, and this x minus one, that is an x minus one Not what I want to do. That is a one over an x minus one squared, which is also the natural log of an x minus one to the negative two. And then since I've got a um, negative exponent or an exponent up here, he's going to fly out in front. So my final answer is negative two times the natural log of an x minus one. Ishk. Okay, and I am out of time. So I went two minutes over. I will have to obviously finish this up next time, which means I'll be extending this My Math Lab homework, but you can at least get started on it. Does anybody have any questions? None from me. All right. What's today, Wednesday? Yep. Have a good weekend, and I will see you all on Monday. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye.